Bruchem Aboyim. Thank you again for attending. Welcome to our home. Um, this week, on my thoughts, we're going to have a lecture on flowers and birds. <laughs> flowers and birds. What are we going to talk about flowers and birds? No idea. All kidding aside, with the introduction of the pandemic in our lives, we have been forced to look at many things that we did before and invent new and hopefully better ways to live our lives. God has created us with the ability to adapt, to learn, to grow. He has assured us that all challenges in life that we face are really opportunities for us to grow. As they say, when one door closes, another door, at least a window, opens. So how do we learn? There is the written word, uh, things that we see, not just books, but also computers. Then there are lectures, things that we hear, conversations, things that we participate in. Of course, there's television and radio and movies, other type of mediums that add knowledge and entertainment. The real question that we must ask is, what is the best way for us to attain and retain true knowledge? The answer to that question is, of course, <clears throat> that different people learn in different ways. Some of us are more audio, and other of us are more visual. <clears throat> I think that we may be able to compare receiving knowledge and retaining knowledge to flowers and birds. See, flowers grow naturally, God, so to speak, plants them, waters them, and then enjoys their beauty. He has allowed us to participate in his enjoyment. In fact, he has even commanded us to plant flowers, trees of our own. We plant them, we water them, and then we too are able to enjoy their beauty. We have the ability to enjoy flowers and plants with all our senses, the use of our sense of sight, to see the harmony of colors and shapes. We use our sense of smell to breathe in all the sweet and soothing scents of nature. We use our mouths to enjoy all the various sensations of taste, texture, and flavor that nature has to offer. We use our sense of touch to experience all different sorts of feelings, from soft and delicate to sharp and prickly. We even use our ears as we listen to the wind as it plays its symphony through the leaves and the trees. Some plants are perennial. Once you plant them, they come back from time, for some time, actually, without your participation. This is true even though they seem to die in the winter. Then there are trees and vines that lose their leaves, but their trunks and vines remain even through the winter, though they do not bear fruit then. And somehow in the spring, they begin to blossom once again. And then miracle of miracles, luscious fruits begin to glisten in the sun, a true gift from God Almighty. But not all flowers are perennial. Many have to be replanted each year. They are called annuals. They require care and nurturing in order for them to blossom. Some bloom for only days and others may bloom the whole season. Many times people will cut them and keep them in their houses for their sweet aroma and beauty. Uh, there are many grains such as wheat and barley that must be planted before each harvest. They are planted for much more than beauty. They are referred to as a staple of life. We depend on them for our sustenance. And even before the field can be planted, there is much work that must be done to clear the field of any stumps or large stones. Then the earth must be plowed over before it can be seeded. There are also many trees that bear no fruit, but they do offer shade and beauty as well as absorbing and reducing the presence in the atmosphere of carbon monoxide levels. Though they bear no fruit, they still, and that, again, that man cannot eat, but still they are used in construction and making paper. Birds, on the other hand, live above the ground. They have the ability to soar in the heavens. They are not limited to walking on the ground. It is said in the Torah that God created fowl from water and earth so to speak, mud. They therefore are comfortable both in the heaven and on the earth. They come in many sizes and shapes, some plain and other artistic displays of colors and shades, true beauty. Most live wild, free to roam. 
They come and go as they wish, turning only to God for their sustenance. Most people can enjoy their beauty, but only from afar. <laughs> Trying to catch a bird in the wild would be next to impossible for most of us. However, those who have been trained and have a great deal of expertise can actually make it look easy. Then there are those birds that are domesticated. Some have even been used as mail carriers, such as pigeons and doves and even ravens. They take messages from one location and deliver them to another. Hawks and falcons have been used for hunting. All of these birds are easily caught, <laughs> but only by their handlers. People, even without extra expertise, keep birds such as parakeets, hummingbirds, canaries as pets. They, however, are usually kept in a cage, since there is no guarantee that if the bird were to get out, that it would return. They are kept primarily for their beauty and companionship. So if catching a bird that you have domesticated is not easy, imagine trying to catch one in the wild. There's a reason that people become bird watchers. That's all they can do. Capturing a bird is a major accomplishment. For most of us, it would actually be an exercise in futility. So, all of this is interesting, but what does it have to do with learning? I think quite a bit. As we go about our everyday lives, we are constantly learning, whether we realize it or not, much like birds and flowers that fill our field of vision. I would guess that most of the time they are there, but we really don't see them. Even if we do see them, it's more of a glance. And at best, we capture them with our eyes, and then we set them free. Many times, as we search for answers to important questions in life, in both the secular and religious arenas, we find ourselves, our thoughts, drifting towards other interests, or sometimes just nothing. But why? You know, it's not like we don't care. Uh, that's why we attend classes, lectures, or read books. I'm afraid that many times the lectures that we hear may become much like soothing music to our ears and it lulls us to sleep. Somehow when we shut our mouths, our eyes seem to follow. By the time we wake up, it really doesn't seem to make any, dis any sense in trying to follow the lecture. You feel you have probably just missed too much information. Another scenario is where one goes to a, to a lecture with great interest, great enthusiasm and anticipation. But they're not there with the hope of actually learning something new. N not really. No. They're hoping to ask that great question, the one that will stump the lecturer and show all in attendance their genius. Then, in fact, there are just normal people, those who attend the class that really do want to hear. They strain to try and learn something. They work at it. However, listening is an art, as is retaining knowledge. Unless you were blessed with a photogenic memory, it really is a challenge. That doesn't mean that you can't succeed, but it means that we just need to persevere, never give up. The Talmud tells us that in olden times, people would review their studies 100 times. For most of us, it can, be it can be compared to the beautiful bird that we see in the wild or in a zoo. We may be able to see them, but actually touching them, well, that's not a possibility, at least not for the average person. However, if the average person is in the company of an expert, a guide, then new possibilities evolve. They now may be able to see a bird, a wild bird up close, maybe even touch it. The expert may point out different nuances that exist from one species to another things that a lay person would not look or even recognize. So finding experts, great teachers, may help us not only to learn, but also to retain that knowledge. When it comes to the world of flowers, again, most of us are only spectators to their beauty. We know the names of some of the most popular ones, such as roses, tulips, carnations, and of course, orchids. But any real question about where, how, and what would be answered with a shrug. However, the true enthusiasts, well, they could talk about flowers for hours. To them, it's much more than a passing fancy. They don't just talk about flowers. They get their hands into the soil. Anything worthwhile is worth getting a little dirty for. They are driven and focused. 
You know, there's a nonprofit organization called TED, which stands for Technology, Entertainment, and Design. They invite all types of people to speak from all the different sciences, religions, art, cultures, and industry. From Pope Francis to Jeff Bezos of Amazon. The one thing that stands out about TED is that no one, no one can speak more than 18 minutes. We as humans find it very difficult to stay focused for more than 18 minutes. And based on this fact, the 18 minute time limit was adopted by the founders of TED. In this space age of constant information, how do we learn to not just admire knowledge as, do, as we do with flowers and birds? How do we evolve from spectators, bird watchers and botanists to bird trainers, raptors and down to earth horticulturists? To each his own. But we need to focus and set a game plan on how to become better listeners. We have to train ourselves so that we can retain more of the information that we gather in life. After all, what is life about? But to gather more and more information in the hope that we can live a better life individually and communally. When reading, we need to take an active role. Things like highlighting and underlining help to focus our attention on those facts that we feel are important enough for us to try to remember. It also helps when we review the material. We don't have to reread the whole book. We can just focus on those facts that we found worthy enough to, of remembering when we read the book the first time, things that we highlighted or underlined. I find that one of the best ways to retain, retain information that we want to put on our hard drive, so to speak, is to take notes. Somehow, when we write something down on paper in longhand, it makes more of an impression on our memory. Writing takes thought. Again, what you have been read, what you have read, and then transfer it into action. Without a doubt, action has a much longer lifespan than does a thought. This concept can be connected to flowers. There are many flowers that cross our paths. We see them, but they're not recorded in our conscious minds. This is similar to information that we hear, but we, we really don't focus on, so to speak, in one ear and out the other. On the other hand, we plant flowers. They take on a totally different impression. We have connected our thought to an action. They have now, so to speak, become attached to our hard drive. Once we plant a flower, we have connected with it in a way that has become part of our being. It is more than a fleeting sight. It has substance to it, a personal reality in time. So too with birds. They may make an impression through our vision, but how do we make that experience last? Today, we would say, take a picture. That's great for a bird, but what about a lecture? Same advice, take a mental picture of what you want to remember. If you can connect it with some other facts, you might re actually remember later, such as trigger words or acronyms. But I think the best way to remember information is to talk to other people, friends, family, anyone that you can get to listen to you. Once you've articulated the words, you own them. They now have a residence in your mind. Otherwise, the chances are that the thought was just a flash that was passing through. That's why it says in Pirkei Avos, to acquire a friend. We need to have someone in our lives that we can be open and honest with, so to speak, bear our souls. We need to discuss our experiences. We need to exchange ideas. And this is how we learn and grow. Look at the Talmud, the Gemara. Great men, learned men, exchanging ideas, all with one goal in mind, searching for truth. There was only one truth in the world, and that truth is God himself. Many flowers and birds are seasonal. After a time, they either wither or they fly away. We don't want our quest for knowledge for life to follow that path. It is our duty, it's our responsibility throughout our lives to never stop growing. Life ends, not when our heart stops beating, no. Many times death begins gradually while we are still breathing and walking upright on this earth. Life has to have purpose. Without that, we are no better than an animal. We need to recognize the method of learning that best fits our mental makeup. 
So God has commanded us in the second book of the Torah, in the portion of Mishpatim, a verse that we repeat in our prayers, in the Aleinu, three times daily. The Adata Hayom, which means, and you shall know this day, God created us with a brain, with an ability to look into everything in nature, even flowers and birds, so as to be able to attain and hopefully retain a knowledge of God in this magnificent paradise that he has created for us. You know, birds may be beautiful, a visual delight, but they're flighty by nature, hard to catch. And so too, audio learning can be easy to attain, but many times difficult to retain. On the other hand, flowers are rooted in the ground. We know exactly where they are. Attaining them and retaining them is relatively easy and rewarding. And so too, the written word. The book is always on the shelf. We know exactly where it is. We can always attain the knowledge that it offers. In addition, we can easily go back and review so as to retain the knowledge as well. As an interesting aside, there was a study done at Yale University. It found that those people who read books over three and a half hours a week lived a full 23 minutes, pardon me, 23 months longer than people who did not read at all. The study suggested that the reading of books provided a survival advantage due to the immersive nature that helps maintain cognitive status. Another advantage that we acquired by studying the Torah from a book. And with that knowledge, may, may we help to herald in the coming of Mashiach quickly and in our time. Again, thank you very much for attending. Again, once again, if there's any, th any topic that you would like to hear about, please contact me. The website is right on, below the, on, on the picture. And uh, let me wish you a, a uh, safe and a happy and healthy week and a good Shabbat. And again, thank you for listening. God bless.